Hey everyone, if you haven't guessed already by the title, we will be doing three soaps today. If you don't wish to watch all three, um, you're welcome to forward through to the other chapters. I wish you would watch them all though. Um, not only does it help my channel, but I give many tips throughout as we go that may or may not have to do only with that soap. So you may just learn something by watching them. Um, or just enjoy it. If not, feel free to skip around. Um, as you see, I am chopping, you've probably seen me do this before, at least in my shorts, chopping up some neon confetti, soap confetti, um, made as I shredded um, some neon soap. You don't have to pre-make. This was pre-made by me for another project, and I have a bunch left over, so you're going to see a lot of neon confetti for the next little while until I get tired of it, I guess, or use it up. But you can shred soaps that you didn't care for. Maybe if you had a few soaps that didn't necessarily sell or they discolored a little bit, you can chop up soaps that, same thing, that you might, might not have loved. If you chop them up, they make great embeds. There's many ways to use up um, extra soap or um, there's just like no reason to throw soap away. Unless something happened to it that um, adulterated the soap itself, like you didn't know any better and put lavender buds in and then they rotted, something like that. Um, that that's happened to many of us. But unless something like that has been added to the soap or um, something has ruined it as a soap itself, the product soap, there's no reason you can't use it again. Um, by chopping and dicing. Now you can remelt melt and pour soap. Um, don't do it a bunch though. If you if you remelt it you once, you're not going to be likely to remelt it again. Also, I recommend you do that right away. Um, if you store it, even if you store it in airtight containers, it's going to dry out quite a bit and be either difficult or impossible to melt and have it behave well for you. It'll overheat very easily um, and get to, uh, it won't melt like the good stuff. It'll just seize up on you, that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, this, as you see here, my footage for putting these little sprinkles in clear soap was lost. Honestly, all I did was put those chopped up shreds into clear soap. That's all I did. Now, I did do some things that I wasn't thrilled with, which is why you'll see me chopping this up later and reusing it in another soap. And um, that is, um, I measured the number of shreds I needed by filling the mold. Um, and I overfilled it a little bit because I knew they would, as I was chopping them up into, into confetti, I knew it would, uh, you know, take up less space. Um, but I didn't realize how much less space. And as you see, I have a lot of empty spots in there. I was trying to get a look with um, using, by using a hotter clear soap. Uh, the little graphic I put up there said that I poured it at 128. I don't think that's correct. I think I poured it at 130. Um, and these, the shreds are made of detergent-free clear soap. And the uh, base that I poured it into is premium crystal clear, both from uh, Crafter's Choice Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'm not affiliated, but they are my favorite, um, favorite soap base. And I just miscalculated and didn't have enough. And so as I did that, I didn't see underneath that some of, because some of them floated to the top, I didn't even see that I didn't have enough. I don't know if that makes sense, but I wanted to um, have it slightly melt a little bit just to, you know, soften the colors a little, and it would have worked great had it been full of the sprinkles, but because it wasn't full and there were some clear spots, those clear spots weren't so clear. Not a tragedy, not the end of the world, but I just, I wasn't, you know, thrilled, uh, but it does look like Fruity Pebbles, <laughs> in my opinion. And the, the fragrance I used in this was Fruity Pebbles. And uh, you'll see in a little bit, um, it discolored. And normally, I, d I do test my uh, fragrances. But with this one, I forgot that my test, it wasn't really a, 
a test, a, an official test. But when I used it and it didn't turn anything, I'd kind of forgotten that I ended up using it in a black soap, which obviously there's nothing to turn colors there. Um, anyway, so you'll see in a minute why I end up chopping them up. Or maybe you won't. Maybe you would like it as is. But I wasn't thrilled with the way it discolored. Um, discoloring can sometimes work really well. And what I do after these is I... I make it work for me. I make it, I sometimes, if I have something that I don't care for, it may not be awful, but I know I can get something better out of it, so I will. Um, anyway, you're, uh, you're seeing here, um, just a quick mention that you're seeing me create my, I'm, I'm going to kind of call it my signature crystal cut because I really haven't seen a lot of people cut this exact same way. And this is the way I do this type of crystal um, every time. I call these crystals rock. They're my um, chunky um, rough cut crystals. And uh, it's just the, the pattern I've done. If you want to rewind it and look and follow it, it's really not difficult to do um, to get them to the basic shape. And then I'm just cutting corners off as I see fit. I cut some off of the top where there's wherever there's a 90 degree angle, I cut that off. Sometimes I cut it all the way down to the bottom corner of this of that same side. And sometimes I leave them cut them halfway through or less. Um, depends on the look I'm going for and what the soap itself looks like. I let the the details inside the soap also help inform where I'm making my cuts and how deep I'm making them. And then of course, I always always facet the top a little bit more it just gives it a little extra sparkle and a little extra place to pick up the light, um, which is uh, why you facet rocks and why you facet crystals. Um, you're wanting it to catch the light. And um, I do, you'll see me doing quite a few crystals coming up in the next couple of months. Um, and I'll talk a lot more about that in an upcoming video I'm going to do talking about how I design my crystals. Um, but I do pay a lot of attention to how actual lapidaries cut and polish their rocks. I'm, I'm learning a lot about that. I have been for quite some time, but now that I'm diving back more into crystals, I'm doing a little bit more of that. Anyway, I th these came out really cute. And if they stayed that color, I don't think I would mind the little cloudy bits as much. I mean, not obviously not what I was going for. Um, and they do have a little bit of kind of glitter floating in there. So up close, they looked they looked pretty cool. But here's my scraps. This is what I was left over with um, when I was done making those cuts. And I usually make those cuts in my crystals, so I do have a lot of those saved up. Um, and you're going to see me use uh, these are I picked out the kind of larger of those scraps, and I put them in a bag. And now I'm taking the, the smaller ones, I'm going to cut them up into really tiny little crystals and use those. Um, you'll see me using three sizes in the soap because then um, I'm going to cut some larger crystal shapes in a moment, you'll see. But um, first, I just want to say that I, I sprinkled a little bit of glitter on. I think I'm using either... Um, oh yeah, this one is definitely Sparkle Sunshine from Mad Micas. By the way... All of the neon colors you see in my shredded soap um, or in any of the neon soaps I make are Mad Micah's uh, neon color shock collection. If you want to buy it as a collection, you can buy the colors individually as well. But um, they, they're gorgeous neons. Neons can be very tricky to work with and I find that Mad Micah's are a little bit easier, smoother to stir into whichever, whatever type of... Um, medium you you use to disperse your micas or pigments because these are really pigments not micas okay so here you see me literally chopping up the crystals I just made this is about a month later <laughs> so it's it, fast forward there I fast forward and skipped time really a big jump um, but that's when I noticed they had because um, I didn't really do anything with them. I didn't even get pictures made with these. I set them aside because I was in the middle of doing a bunch of other things. And by the time I got back to them, they had discolored and I was like, OK, we're going to fix this. So though there's a reason I brought up the Mad Micah's um, Sparkle Sunshine. And that is I'm really specifically trying to make these 
discolored crystals um, work for the aesthetic of the soap I want. So it's yellowed. It's kind of a, you know, golden yellow-ish. So I'm going with it. Gold. If I used silver, it would really not work well with, even if I used like the Sparkle Plenty or something along those lines. I don't think it w would have worked well with the discolored soap. So the gold actually enhances that look. And um, I think you'll find in the, in the finished product, it really works well because I use a lot of the gold and that's kind of almost a focus of the soap, of the soaps that I, I make from this. Um, you see me make a lot of little, not, I'm not going to call them mistakes because they're all overcomable. <laughs> I don't know that that's a word, but they're all, um, easily f fixed or, um, altered to, uh, to something that I do like. And that's just, like I said earlier, that's what I do. Keep going till I find, get something that I like out of it. Um, and then usually if I'm doing crystals I'm still going to have scraps from that soap left over and those are going to be chopped up and put into another soap etc etc it's a never-ending cycle but or recycle I should say um I know that was bad um here is uh I use this loaf mold I think throughout this whole soap this is again soap number two because I'm reusing the shredded neon soap and, uh, but I think I'm pretty sure I used this one in the last one as, oh no, I don't. I have a different mold. Sorry. Okay. So this one, I wasn't pleased with this choice here. I had a vision and I wanted to create a little kind of corner row of crystals. And I did that, but it just didn't work with the, the rest of the look of the soap. And I find different ways to fix that in the way that I cut these, but just looking at them there and just looking at it at the pile of them I had and it later um, later when you see the the video of how they turn out the way those crystals look in the clear soap it's really cool it's beautiful it would make a gorgeous soap on its own which very likely since I have a lot of these neon shreds and soaps utilizing them you're going to see me do that at some point. You're just going to see me use just those little crystals chopped up, the little glitter on them, and in a full soap of just clear or something like that. Or black, because it the black looks pretty. This black, by the way, is activated charcoal. You've seen If you've seen my previous videos, you may have seen me using that in dispersing it in glycerin, which I still do. I was out of that, and this I like to keep it on hand that way. It's just quicker to grab and use it, and uh, I when you have open a jar of activated charcoal, you have to be really careful. It can fly everywhere and make a really big mess. And if you're not wearing a mask, it can go up your nose. Not great. Um, so I used alcohol this time. It works just as well. I just prefer to have it in glycerin, but I wanted to also point out that you can do either one. It works just fine either way. So this so base that I'm using here, this one is the extra clear um, I believe, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's the extra clear. I don't need it to be that clear. Um, it's not trying to show off the clarity of a soap. That's where I use the premium um, crystal clear. Um, but I happened to have, I got the extra clear at one point on a really good sale. And so that's, that's the advantage over using uh, my crystal clear, which at least for me in this moment, cost me more to buy. So I'm kind of hoarding that a little bit and um, using up the um, stuff that doesn't have to be necessarily super clear. It's still, it's very, it's a very clear soap. It works really well. Um, but if I'm going for clarity, I use the premium crystal clear, not the extra clear. Um, it, it shows off, I mean, it really brings out the colors of the mic you're using. It doesn't distort those at all. So it's absolutely fine to use in a colored soap. Um, and now I'm finding my big chunks here. You see, I'm, I'm just kind of pouring in little layers and I'm, I'm not giving these time to set up on purpose. Um, you've seen me do this in a couple other soaps. I'm kind of calling it um, either liquid swirling, liquid layering, um, wet layers. I've called it a few different things. There may be actual an actual official term for it, but I don't know what it is. So... Um, I did go ahead and continue the use of the Fruity Pebbles, as you may have seen. I think I put the little bottle up there to the camera, but because um, it, it doesn't matter at this point, um, it's not going to do anything to the black. And if it 
discolors the gold, which I'm not even sure I added um, fragrance to that. I might have. I'm using so little of that. It's just an accent color. And all it is is the sparkle uh, sunshine. In I did use the premium crystal clear for that because I did want that to maintain a decent amount of clarity. But if it had yellowed, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I just really wanted that gold to show up more than anything. So I'm alternating layers of crystals and the black soap and then the gold. I want you to note um, that the black soap is a little, a bit hotter, quite a bit hotter really than the gold. And you'll see as I'm pouring the gold, it kind of drizzles in there. It's thicker. You can see it um, cooling off. It, it gets thicker as it cools. Um, the black soap is a bit hotter. It's not incredibly hot. It's not intended to be so hot that it melts anything, which sometimes I do. Um, it's just, I want it to be hot enough for everything to stick together. And so I believe I poured, this is the one, and I mistakenly put up the wrong temperature. I think this is the one that I poured around 128 for the black soap. The gold soap, I don't know if I took, if I showed on camera my measurement, uh, my, my temperature measurement, but it, it was like really low, um, 117, something like that. It was fairly low, 116. It was in the, in that category, but it's still, I want you to notice I didn't have to, I, I don't think I had to reheat that even once I got through it all. If you have a soap that has a good open time and stays, um, stays liquid longer, you have a lot more working time and it really helps with designs. I have a really hard time. I've, I've done them myself because I've used a variety of other brands and, um, I've like getting to the end of a swirl and having it completely be solidified and you still have a half an inch to the soap to go. And so you have to add another whole layer. It looks separate. I don't care for it. It, so, I mean, I've, I've had to do it many times, but anyway, I was happy finding this soap and being able to get a full swirl in, um, that looks like an entire unit of soap. There's no line as far as this part stopped. And then I had to start again. Um, these, these really pretty crystals you see me putting on top. I was thinking, oh, look, that'll be pretty on the top. Almost, I think every single soap I pull from this loaf, I end up removing those except for one. And that's because I'm, again, I'm not real thrilled. It's beautiful. It's really cool. But I wasn't thrilled with the design aspect of the way these turned out. And it was all on me and it would, and it's just something I'm picky about. So, uh, you might see these and go, oh, well, these are great, but I didn't care for the way the designs worked together. I think there were some really cool designs, but they needed to be in a different soap, not all in the same soap. I had too much going on the bottom right there. I knew when I pulled that out and I saw that bottom clear corner, um, I knew it wasn't the look I had intended or it just didn't work properly. What I had in my head didn't didn't work. Sometimes things work on paper or in your head and then you get to the soap loaf and it doesn't do what you want or it doesn't appear like you thought it would. So that's part of trial and error and learning and so is adapting. And that's something I'm pretty decent at is adapting things when I don't like the way they look. I can usually figure out a way to make it work. <laughs> Cross. I don't, oh, I'm crossing my fingers hoping the inside looks better than the, than the outside there because I love the top. I just didn't like the front. Like I would just wanted these to be a slice and see, I just, there's too much. I didn't like it. Um, I liked it a lot of it, a lot of parts of it, but I didn't like it as a unit. So in a little bit, you will see how I fix this. Um, I kind of take the approach to this because I am doing, um, shredded soaps and re kind of rebatching sort of, that's not really what a true rebatch is, but I'm reusing soaps and, and, playing with different ideas. I kind of consider this, um, an experimental soap. All of these really, these three are, are experiments because none of them have I done exactly like these before. And I was trying to see what I could do, pushing the boundaries with these sprinkles a little bit. Um, that's kind of why I wanted the first soap. I wanted the sprinkles to melt just a little, just a little bit enough to, to not really swirl, but just look a little, less like confetti. Um, and you'll see by the end, I do achieve that in the last soap. 
So, and I have an idea of how I want to play with that in another soap. Oh, there's my boyfriend again. <laughs> I think I may come up with some kind of challenge for finding where, where he um, decides to insert his little um, hellos for you. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that yet, but I, I think it's funny. If you find it funny, let me know in the comments. Um, if it just gets annoying, I'll have him stop, but I, I find it pretty humorous. Um, then again, I have a twisted sense of humor. So there's that. Um, as you see, I did three low, uh, three loaf slices, and then I took that piece and turned it on its side and cut it right down the middle through the side. So you have one whole piece that's the top and one whole piece that's the bottom. And then I do a variety of different things to get different shapes out of these. I needed to see. Sometimes when you cut in, in, uh, uh, vertically instead of horizontally, it gives you a completely different look. If you ever watch any um, cold process soap makers, there are several of the swirls that they do that are intentionally done that way. They're like, oh, okay, cut it this way and you get this look. Cut it that way and you get this look. And they're beautiful. And, um, you know, if you, if you can take those kinds of things into consideration and be open to cutting things in a different way or thinking differently, thinking outside the box, you can get some really cool looks. The, um, the one that's, well, I guess I'll go to what's being done on screen instead of getting ahead of myself. I'm, all I'm doing with this little, um, rectangle is like I did in my emerald soaps. I cr created a plus sign on the top and then used that to mark how I'm cutting the, uh, the end off the the right angle cutting it off but doing it flat against the the side or with with the side I guess not the corner but the whole side and that's what gives you that look of it it's called a point it's called a tower it's called an obelisk an obelisk is a four-sided point or tower so that's where that um, word comes in the difference it's a type of tower or point. Um, and I'm, I'm working hard to learn all of my crystal cuts and that type of thing because I like recreating them. I like a lot of free form crystals though too, because I, I even like that when the, the lapidaries cut their, um, at the actual stones free form, because they're usually trying to highlight the natural look of the stone, where the inclusions are or where the, the most clarity is, whatever type of look they're going for. Um, I mean, most of them, are, they're looking to get the most money out of the gemstone. So if they can get like an, a grade A gemstone, they're going to cut out the inclusions as best they can or grind them off, etc. Um, so this is kind of what I'm doing, but with soap. Um, <laughs> there's none, no part of the soap that is more valuable than the other, but it creates different looks and can, um, can get rid of part. I just get rid of the parts either that I don't like or make the shape not what I really want. And sometimes, like with this one, I don't like the way it looks yet, shape-wise. But I come back and I kind of keep fiddling with it until I like it. And that's, um, I really don't have any better explanation for what I do to create the free form ones than that. Um, don't be afraid to cut away from a soap because all of those, it's not like you're throwing that away. You're not wasting soap that's going to be put in another soap. I think I go back later and even cut more off of that one. I'm not sure. Okay, this one here, that became my favorite one. Um, that is a two-sided soap. Like, hands down, it is just, there's no other way to look at it. And there, that is another thing that you will find some cold processors, um, cold process soapers do, is they create uh, soaps where um, there's at least two designs, one on one side, one on the other. Sometimes um, something else in the middle that wears away as you're using it. Those are so cool. I'm so impressed with people who can do that. And this one just kind of happened on accident. So I went with it and it ended up becoming my favorite soap. But you'll get close-ups of it a little bit later so you can see maybe more what I'm talking about. I liked the direction of the way this soap was going. This is what gave me the idea to cut, um, to cut that clear part off. I saw that that diagonal might be able to create an interesting shape. And so that's kind of what I was going with here. And then um, once I get the facets the way I like, again, like um, as 
I do with my chunky crystal soaps. I come back and facet it a little bit more, just the, the smaller edges with a um, peeler. Not one that I use on vegetables, just my soap peeler. Um, and here I'm doing kind of like my classic cut, but it's kind of modified. Um, it's because it starts with an actual rectangular square um, rather than a, an off, like a, that's really not a rhombus, is it? But it's a definitely an off um, center shape. It's off kilter. It's, and I really, I prefer art that is a little bit, um, I'm not going to, not off center is not the word I'm looking for. There's a word I'm looking for and I can't find it. So if I come across it in my head, I will say it. But basically, um, asymmetrical, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, asymmetrical has a really big place in art. When things are too symmetrical, um, I mean, you can get a really beautiful look that way as well. But I find asymmetrical things very um, much more eye-catching. Um, especially if, I don't know, sometimes there, uh, sometimes you can get asymmetrical where it really doesn't work as well. Um, and that's just part of the trial and error in learning how to do things. But as a lot of artists can tell you, and this is the only one I left as a slice, by the way, I just thought I should leave one because I don't know, I may cut it up later. Um, here's my favorite. This is the double sided one. Um, look how that gold goes in there. And this side, uh, that, I'm going to make one like that. I know. I'm going to make an entire loaf like that at some point, probably. I love it. I love the way that came out. The um, sparkling sun, sparkle sunshine in the clear slightly swirled into the black is just beautiful. Um, and I'm definitely going to try to replicate that look. Um, oh, man. I was right in the middle of saying something and I got off track as I so frequently do. Um, hmm. I guess I was just still rambling on about being asymmetrical. Oh, yeah, yeah. Many artists will tell you, go for odd numbers. Sets of three, sets of five, sets of seven is can be much more appealing than, you know, two or four or six. It, it's just... Um, tends to be more aesthetically pleasing to most people. So um, that was the point I was trying to make and forgot. This one, let's see, did I actually leave? I think I ended up, if I don't do it here, I think I ended up cutting off the tops. They just don't work as well with the um, the crystal shapes. I also think I came back and faceted the bottom of that if I don't do it here. But I might do it here. I don't remember. But look at the different, I mean, they are these, each little crystal piece is very different each each little chunk is is um unique but it comes together to create a very pleasing picture as a unit whereas that the part that was the um the really clear sliver on the side really just didn't do it for me um it just didn't seem to go with the rest it's not that it wasn't pretty but um and these smell fabulous by the way the fruity pebbles i love that fragrance but i have now learned that i'm not going to use it in clear soap so there we have it. Um, I think the first soap I used it in, you will see pictures at the end of this video um, f that are giving you, I mean, hopefully, they're giving you several other ideas, and um, not that many, but a few other ideas of soaps I've used with um, shreds, shredded soap, because it's, I mean, there's so much that can be done. Um, most of them I did using the neon shreds, because like I said, I had um, a big project I was working on with them. So I have a bunch um, but you can, I mean, if this soap didn't work out and I didn't like it, I could shred this soap and put it in something else and it would probably look really cool. I did, I'll, I'll give you a story when we get to the pictures of something I did that in that way that, that I thought looked really cool. Anyway, um, maybe I'll show it to you someday in person or not in person, in a video, I'll do a demo. Um, yeah, there's that double-sided soap again. That is awesome. It's my favorite. I did take some pictures of that from the side so you can kind of see both looks at once because I mean that that's neat to me too. It's but it's also a good way for people to see what they're getting. They're getting two looks. Okay more 
neon shreds because I used up the other ones. Um, so this soap, uh, you see some other weird looking, well, not necessarily weird looking, but strange shapes of soap around and some other things that I'm working on in this one um, at the same time. This was an absolute experiment that I decided to film while I played around with some ideas I had. And I'm not going to get into that part of the experiment right now, but this part of it was me trying to really capture the look of those neon shreds um, chopped up into confetti and put in soap hot enough to melt it just a little bit. Um, I really, um, bleh, I really was going for the look um, of an opal and I play around with opal looks a lot. There are many varieties of opal and different looks that can be achieved and I want to do all of them eventually because I, that's one of, if not my favorite stones. It's hard for me to pick because I really just am in love with crystals. So the ignore the one at the top that you see and ignore you don't don't have to ignore this one because it really comes out cool. I do finish this one on camera here. Um, but it's not really other than I just wanted you to see the um, the results of it of pouring the hot soap on there um, and pouring the black. I think uh, making a note this black is it doesn't it looks fairly thin there where I'm pouring it. But I want you to notice here it's cool enough to do this with. That pour right there, I think, makes it, makes the whole soap. Um, I also poured very little. I know it's hard to tell because this is sped up a little bit, but I was pouring very slowly and very small amounts. And in order to try to control the flow of, and which obviously I didn't control it fully, um, it, it's hard. Once the soap is moving, you really, it's not, there's not a ton you can do, but uh, beware if you're spraying it with alcohol, it's going to make it move. Um, I, I do one little extra spray in this one that I'm dumping these little shreds into now that I was like, Oh, I probably shouldn't have sprayed that. But I caught myself before I did more I, and, um, and it worked out fine. It came out beautiful, but, um, the, we'll, we'll talk in another video about the bases that I used for the soap. I'm not showing you with the aqua and and the one that the other one that I do show you that kind of reminds me of a bolder opal. I was kind of going for that look of opal with the black potch. I don't know how much you know about opals, but some of them have a thing called potch where it's a, a black part of the stone that isn't opalized. And it's usually it's it's considered, you know, the part you want to cut out. But I wanted it to look like a natural opal and um you will see kind of what that looks like. This one, I think it came out neat. I think I can do it better, um, but this was my first attempt with it and my first attempt at trying to create pockets within the soap. I don't think I'm going to try that particular way again. I am going to try it, but um, you'll see why when I when you see how I did that. Um, you're going to probably laugh, um, but I don't recommend it as as a soap technique. I was just trying to figure out how to get the look. Um, that's what experiments are for. Um, I knew it wasn't something I'd want to replicate. I just wanted to see, okay, if I do this, how can I achieve this look in another way? That's, that's the basic idea. Um, yeah, I'm pretty free and loose with a knife. Um, so I, I'm not asking you to do that. It, I, it looks a lot more in control than it is. Um, I've, carved with a knife for a very long time and um, have pretty decent control over it. Carving soap is difficult because it's slippery. Um, so, uh, but this, keep in mind, this is sped up. So everything you see is much faster. I take my time. And that's sh as sharp as that little knife looks. It's really not. <laughs> it's just quite dull. Um, it, but it's enough to cut soap. It's perfect for that. That's why I continue to use it for this, this purpose. Um, I have some that are sharper than others and I only do certain types of cuts with. Um, but anyway, these, I love the way these came out. One melted a little bit more than the other. And I believe that's be just because the soap was hotter. I didn't um, take the temperature um, in between. I believe the first one I poured, the clear was at 133 and then the black was cooler, probably around 
125, somewhere in there. It was on the top side of the melting point, which is usually 125 for mine. Um, but it was um, maybe a little bit higher. I didn't want it seizing up. I wanted it to stay fluid. Um, but I didn't want it also, I didn't want it melting into or swirling very easily into the hotter soap. That's something that um, can help little swirls like this especially. I mean, I know we've talked about big swirls. And when you're doing a, a loaf full of swirls, low temperatures are key. You, you just have to have lower temperatures or it's not going to swirl. You're going to end up, they just blend and um, not get good definitive swirls. But when you're doing smaller um, soaps, at least one of them, uh, at least one of the colors, if you've got two colors going on, at least one of them needs to be fairly low temperature. One can be a little bit higher and achieve good results, as you see. Um, you still, I can't tell you exact, exactly what you should do temperature-wise um, because I don't, you know, I'm, I don't have your microwave. I don't know what soap you use that kind of thing. I do encourage you to experiment on a smaller, um, on a small level. Anytime you're trying something new, it's best to do it in a single little mold like this, tiny, something tiny. Um, I did more than one because, um, because I did, I had the soap going and I had it kind of left over from doing another experiment, which that's the one we're not talking about yet. Cause until, <laughs> until I do that video, um, I, wasn't going to include this one in this video, but that was using the same neon shred. So I thought I might as well, because it's yet another way to use a shredded soap or chunked up crystal soap. You could do chunked crystals for this as well. Um, opals usually have very thin, small little pieces as the, the colored pieces that are opalized or the water. It I mean, that's basically water being trapped in the stone that helps to get that look. Um, but, uh, obviously we don't use water. So I did use, and I, here's what I forgot to mention earlier. And please let me know if I forget something else. Cause you know, I'm going to, I'm doing three soaps at once here and I forget things anyway. So please ask me in the comments. Um, if you notice something I left out that, that you're curious about, um, or would like to know, just let me know the, um, the thing I left out is that when I was chopping the little tiny pile of neon shreds, I shredded up for this one. Um, I used a lot of glitter. And when I say glitter, I'm meaning really sparkling micas. I used uh, Sparkle Me Aqua. I used... I'm not sure. Sparkle Violet, maybe? Something like that. Or either that or Sparkle Plenty. And then... Um, the first one I did, I think was a nurture soap. It's, it's a gold. It's, it's a white that reflects gold. I can't remember the name of it, but I will put it in the description, in the description box. If you don't know where to find that, please, um, let me know. It's different on each kind of, uh, venue that you're venue. I, I guess that's right. Each, uh, app or a uh, place that you're watching it on. Um, I know there's a better word for that, but I'm not going to search all day for it. So, <laughs> um, if you're watching on TV, it's different than if you're watching on an iPhone, different than you're watching on an Android computer or whatever. Um, so, but the, it's there, it shows up on all of them. So it just takes some searching sometimes. I absolutely loved these. This is the one that was, to me, just came out perfect. It melted just a little bit, just enough. It really looks like little spots, little I don't know, melted, uh, created color from, I don't know, however the, the rocks are formed. Um, it, this one's a little chunkier, but I still love it. And see, it swirled a little bit more on the backside too. It must've been a little hotter there. And you see how the black kind of shows up, but it doesn't cover anything. It didn't mix in with the clear. It's just showing it in. And I, I left it looked like, uh, I wanted it to look like I was fastening it and trying to get some of that potch or black off, um, but left some unintentionally. So these, these shredded soaps and the ones you saw before, um, th those are ones I was creating with these shreds. The 
eggs you see there. This was one I did in clear before I, I kind of added some other uh, blends of the neons in there. And um, so all of those were ones I'd done previously and just wanted to give you some other ideas. You can put them in a variety of types of soap. I've got a lot more. So when I get to doing some holiday things, I will include those. And um, something I, I wanted to mention is those the egg shapes. You saw me, the Easter eggs. I did shred a couple of those because I had some left over. And the shreds looked so cool. I can't even tell you. I can't describe it. They were, um, they were so gorgeous. Um, and, uh, I had, those are all long gone cause I created a couple of soaps with those for friends and they're really neat. I'll show you again someday cause I will definitely, um, do that as a, a tutorial just to show you cause it's fun. Um, and show you how many different ways you can use, use up the shreds. As long as you're not trying to continually melt them again, they can be used. Um, yeah, this is the image of that two sided one. So I was trying to show if somebody, if you were putting that on your website and you wanted somebody to buy it, you'd want to show both sides and then show how, kind of how they come together on the side. And there's the group of that picture. These I was really, really pleased with. I, I will do more with this technique of trying to slightly melt. They melt a little bit easier because they are detergent free. And at least this brand of detergent free is, has a lower melting point even than the crystal clear, which is quite low. So, um, that's, uh, you're kind of able to play with the temperatures a little bit. Um, yeah, these are my favorite new thing, my favorite new technique. So I'm going to, you know, put in the comments what kinds of things you might like to see me try this technique with. Um, but I do have the idea of the first one that I want to do. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you learned something. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. Have a great day. Bye.